Greetings once again, everybody. Uh, so happy 2022. Uh, we uh, I've already gotten the last other two videos slash podcasts out so you guys can uh, have a happy holidays, even though that one kind of got a little deep there. And then also, uh, I'm very happy that I got the Romney's Gold Watch done because I always think that's a, a worthwhile thing for podcasts to do, especially when a uh, a partner on that is not able to do it anymore. But the the one that I know that everybody has been waiting to see has been what's happening with the schedule in 2022. Um, I've gone over lessons that I've learned. And like I said in that last video, one of the biggest problems that we had is um, and I, I just kind of want to explain this really quick um, to give some context for those who may not know um, uh, or maybe brand new to the channel. So it, originally I, I did a lot of Let's Play content, but in 2019, I decided to go in a different direction. Um, I didn't necessarily want to do Let's Play content anymore. I wanted to try and do something a little bit more inviting. And so I actually talked to my wife, Andrea, who liked this idea, and we started streaming together in 2019. And ever since then, uh, I've actually liked the medium a little bit more than just doing regular Let's Play content because it allows you guys a voice and it allows us to not be in such a predetermined kind of atmosphere um like people might know in my previous let's play videos like i would go and find stories for us to talk about or uh things like that and this actually allowed for me to be a little bit more uh casual and just talk with people about what's on their minds and i i really like that a lot better considering that i think it's to a lot of people it's very therapeutic and also youtube was kind of going in the direction of they wanted real people, not characters. Now, obviously, some YouTubers have been able to still pull off characters. But, you know, there there was a lot of turning towards legit individuals. And I kind of wanted to do that, too. I'm all right with playing a character, but <clears throat> I, I kind of wanted to still have that um, that genuineness that I knew people would like. Uh, because like I could play a character and that's, that's great and all, but I like being me because at that point I can resonate with people and I can relate to people and just be myself. So at that point, um, I really liked where that was going. And later on in 2019, I actually convinced Alex to let us do Dragon Shadow that way. And for 29, 2019, I don't think we really did anything, but 2020, we tried to, to bring it uh, to the forefront. And then 2021, we tried, we really did try to, to make it a little bit more regular, but it just kind of didn't work out. And I've, I've always been a little bit sad about that because people did like it. <clears throat> and we were able to finish off, uh, two games that I know people wanted to see. So, um, I'm very happy with where, with where that's been now in 2020, um, things got a lot more complicated because I had gotten a job. And uh, so I, I decided to get a job again to help ground me in, in a little bit more reality than I was really dealing with. Plus being able to earn some extra money to be able to help pay the bills and not necessarily put so much on Andrea because Andrea had done so much for me in allowing me to pursue this that it didn't feel right to just sit there and I, I was making money. Don't get me wrong, but it wasn't anything near what she was. And that didn't feel fair to me. You know, I appreciated that she, she let me, you know, kind of pursue this just as much as my dad probably would have if he was still alive. But I, I really felt like this needed to change. And so I, I went back to work, but obviously now priorities are kind of skewed, right? Uh, I needed to prioritize work more than I prioritize streaming. And I, I think I did f a fairly good job uh, as I transitioned, even in, 20 in uh, 2021. I think I did a fairly good job because I was still able to, to get shifts done, as well as being able to get podcasts and streaming happening, as long as there weren't any other extreme complications. <clears throat> so at that point, 
I kind of want to start with the YouTube stuff, and there's a reason I've I've built up a lot of that, a lot of this. There's a method to the madness, I promise. Uh, right now, with the gaming content that is provided on the channel, I'm very happy with where it is. Um, I, I love being able to stream for you guys and being able to um, have that more genuine interaction with you. I mean, I just barely recorded a stream and got to, to relate to all of you and, and be able to catch up after a while. So I was very happy that that happened. Um, and, and that helps me too, because then at that point I can also, I can take that relatability and I can work it into my own creativity. Uh, so right now what I'm basically saying is streams are going to continue. I'm not really going to change anything in those, in those formats because I like where they are. I really do. Um, streams are really great the way they are. What's probably going to happen in the long run is, um, in 2021, I tried to maintain five days of streaming, which is kind of absurd uh, because two of them, no, three of them were with Andrea. Occasionally, we'd have a Dragon Shadow live, and so that'd be a sixth day. But then we also had, I tried to do gaming solo, and I also had a podcast night. So I've obviously got to cut some stuff here because that's that's way too much. And uh, it's kind of killing me in terms of efforts and, and everything like that. So what's going to happen is this. Um, as far as schedule is concerned, Monday and Tuesday are still going to be there. Um, I really do like that. And Andrea does, too, because these are days off for her. And she doesn't have to worry about prepping for the next work day. So she likes them as well as Saturday. So we're going to continue to keep those. Sunday is primarily going to be a Dragon Shadow Live day uh, because that works the best for Alex as well as myself. And but the the thing that we are going to do is it's not going to be regular, but we're going to make it as regular as we can, um, because once every other month is definitely not enough. I think right now the discussion last we had was we really wanted to do at least we wanted to have like a minimum goal of at least once a month. Because you were still getting like an hour and a half of content, which back in the, the Let's Play days would have been, you know, three or four parts. Uh, so four weeks worth of content um, there. And, and on top of that, with the added stuff of being able to interact, um, we wanted to at least do that. But we have been talking about maybe trying for a little bit more than that, like maybe once every other week. Um but the decision that has primarily been made by him and me is it really depends on what's going on. So we at least are going to aim for once a month getting together on a Sunday and doing Dragon Shadow Live. But if we can make that work more, we will do more. Because we still have active Let's Plays. We still have Let's Plays we want to do. So a lot of that is, is going to stay the same. So... That's really the only change to gaming content that's going to happen is we're going to try and get Dragon Shadow Live to be a little bit more often. And then we have the three set days that are going to be with Andrea. Wednesday and Friday are going to become optional or podcast days. The reason I'm doing that is because um, Wednesday is a good work day for me as well as Friday. So I might be able to get a really good, uh, really good shift. But um, with what I'm planning to do with the podcast, I can free up a Friday at any given moment and be able to to get that done. Uh, Wednesday, however, might all there might be weeks where Wednesday might work better uh, to be able to record than, than Friday. So basically what I'm doing there is making those optional days so that if I can, maybe I can do like a, a solo podcast or something like that on a Wednesday. Or um, I could do the podcast on Friday. So those are going to become like optional days, but there's a good chance that things might still be happening on them. They, the reason I'm keeping them optional is because the start time might have to differ uh, because if I, get a, if I get a shift, I've got to honor it. And if it means that I'm going to be late, it means I'm going to be late. And so I want to make sure that I've got that covered. And also if, if crap comes up, then and if I need to cancel, I mean, I'm going to feel bad about it, but at least at that point, 
you guys kind of know it's an optional day. So at that, so at that point, it's not like you get horribly disappointed because you can just kind of go off and do your own thing. So once again, uh, the, with the way that that's going to go Monday and Tuesday are going to stay solid for Andrea, uh, for me and Andrea, same thing with Saturday, Sunday will be Dragon of shadow live days. It, I'm hoping that we'll be able to get it happen more often, but maybe, maybe not. Who knows? And Wednesday and Friday are going to become optional. Um, there might be streams on both of those days on a given week, but that, but I will also kind of maintain a communication there and say whether or not it can work, whether or not it can't work. Uh, but they will be solo. That that's, that's the big thing. Either they're going to be a podcast or they're going to be solo. <clears throat> and solo streams will probably just be me playing a, a game to kind of unwind and be able to talk to you guys. So that's kind of the big gaming changes that are happening. And that's primarily YouTube content. Um, what happens with the podcast? Um, this is not the podcast video. I just want to make sure that I, I make that clear because I still haven't been able to work out every single detail, but there are some things that I can reveal here. Um, I have talked to enough of you and I've talked to enough of the new listeners that we've been able to gain in 2021. And uh, enough of you have convinced me that, yes, I can go ahead and still hate YouTube. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, Mama Susan does not deserve my love. She deserves my contempt. Uh, but some of you guys just don't know how to run RSS feeds. Some of you guys don't want to do things like Spotify. And I get that. Um, they and you want to be able to keep all your platforms just one place. I understand that. Um, I'm still going to promote the RSS feed, but given your argument, I will allow for podcasts to remain on YouTube. But there will be spe only specific ones that are allowed. OK, uh, the main podcast will probably be allowed, although I am debating whether or not at some point to just allow clips, and if you want the full podcast, you have to go to the RSS feed. because, And that works out, I think, for a lot of people, because some of those people just want, like, chapters or clips. And so at that point, you guys can get that and be able to listen, and if you guys want to download it and you, and you know how, then you can. And so that works out for you in the long run. Uh, but that's how it's going to go. After a while, if I do not think that it's getting any more traction or anything like that, I might remove it just to make it podcast uh, RSS exclusive, but you will still have the clips. They will still be up. Um, with that, um, that's the main podcast. Geek News Marathon Night by popular demand because a lot we actually do get really good traction on both YouTube as well as uh, Spotify and all the podcast platforms that I have been convinced to allow for those playlists to stay on YouTube. Whereas last year I was strongly considering letting them go, um, and letting them be RSS exclusive, or at least taking the older ones and let them be RSS exclusive. I will allow for them to stay on because I, I get you guys' argument um, they actually do a lot to advertise, and so at that point, I'm not necessarily against that. Uh, there is still Geek News Marathon Night happening. I, I teased this on previous streams, but we've already announced the new titles. There is going to be Fruits Basket Season 3, which is going to be an episode-by-episode -episode deal, uh, since it's fairly new. And then the final one, or the other one, is going to be Season 1 of Rising of the Shield Hero, and we'll tackle a couple of episodes each episode. So uh, at that point, those are still happening and they will stay on YouTube. Geek News Movie Night, it's live broadcast might stay on YouTube, but once it gets edited and it is up on the RSS feed, it is RSS exclusive. Uh, I made it specifically that way and I'm sticking to my guns on this. Um, if you guys really enjoy Geek News Movie Night, it will be recorded live and the video will stay up until it is edited. And then at that point, once it's up on the RSS feed, it'll stay up for like a week after that. And then I will be taking the, the movie night down. 
uh, simply because it is RSS exclusive. I made it that way, and I intend to stick to that. Um, I made that commitment. I want to stick with that one. The other one uh, that people have talked to me about quite a bit, because I've, I've reached out to so many people on how to do this, is Geek News Game Night. For those who don't know what I'm planning with that, um, Geek News Game Night was originally kind of a let's play thing that I could do with panelists, uh, but it went into a hiatus because we just we couldn't find time to be able to record together. Uh, aside from, you know, the once a week that we, we tried to do it. So at that point, um, it went by the wayside and I started working on an idea that I was calling retro reviews, which is basically like for those who like the game reviews that I did on YouTube. Um, I'm very thankful for that because you guys have shown me a lot of support there and I like doing game reviews. I really do. But the bottom line is, is that, uh, I can't, I hate doing them like every other games journalist does because you only allow yourself the new games that are coming out and you only allow yourself, you know, so many hours before you have to do a write up. And, at, and in my opinion, that amount of time is never enough to be able to cover a game the way that it ought to be covered. So Geek News Game Night, I decided to basically take this retro review and put it under that. What it is going to be is a comprehensive review of a game. Uh, of a game that I'm taking on and it can either be, it could be new, but a lot of my focus right now is going to be retro. Uh, so at that point, uh, I basically in podcast form, I'm going to go over all the goods, all the bads properly score it. Um, I actually do have a, a much more not inclusive, um, much more in depth scoring system now than I, I did originally. Uh, just to make sure that I can cover for a lot of things that I wasn't covering in in the YouTube reviews due to time. So those uh, that's going to be happening. <clears throat> and uh, I can also obviously state a lot of people know this, but I will just state it for the record. The first episode will be based on Sly Cooper and the Thievius Raccoonus because you guys uh, recommended that for so many years. And I feel like that is a good start point. Uh, because it's a platformer that I don't necessarily know about, and platformers didn't take a whole lot of time to do. And who knows, maybe with some of these games, I want to do multiple playthroughs to be able to see replay value. Um, it, it made sense. It, it ultimately will be the first episode of Geek News Game Night, and there will be a YouTube version for these. Um, what I'm basically going to do is, instead of putting up like a thumbnail or something like that that I usually do with podcasts, or I just leave the live feed up. I will be putting up gameplay that I am recording of that game while the podcast is going. Because these the the minimum requirement for this is going to be like a 30 minute podcast going over this game. But I'm allowing myself as much time as maybe 50 minutes to be able to cover everything for it that I so I can I feel like I can wrap it into a nice type little bow. Uh, and then then move on to the next game. Um, I also want to address this because I've I've gotten a few questions on it. Like how how many games are you planning on? Like, do you have a plan for how you're going to be doing games? Because certain games are longer than others. Here's the way that I've actually kind of worked on it. And actually, during my holiday break, I have gotten quite a bit of work done in that regard. I've gotten uh, I think I've got probably the next two game nights. uh at a point where I could start writing them up because I'm at least going, I'm going to be taking a casual approach like I did with some of those other reviews, but I'm at least going to have some kind of notes on certain things. I like certain things I dislike, and that I want to make sure I mention. And so I've got two of those, I think that are solidly able to do it, but I'm going to keep them uh, close to the vest. And the main reason being is because I want to kind of show you guys the possibilities of what I can do. <clears throat> there are games that I just wasn't able to devote a whole lot of time to. And so I always talked about maybe doing like a an update video. And then as soon as I have a, had a more comprehensive video to let that other one go and let the comprehensive video stand. This is going to be that case where it's just the comprehensive video. 
and I'm going to allow myself the time that I think those games will take, and that's why I'm not necessarily setting a schedule to Geek News Game Night. It will happen when it happens, and I will announce when the next one is ready, so you guys will at least be able to get those announcements via Twitter under the Geeky NRO tag, uh, because Twitter will not let my other account out, so you'll get that there. But I do actually have other ones in the pipeline that are ready to go as soon as Sly Cooper happens, and then I can start recording those and and doing the notes for them. So that's going to happen. There will be a podcast version that will be on the RSS feed, and then there will be a YouTube version, which will get gameplay. Uh, So you guys can look forward to that. Also with YouTube, I also want to say that there's another idea that I've been bouncing around for a while. <clears throat> Again, this does not have a skit schedule because uh, of a lot of factors, but basically uh, I wanted to try and do analysis videos, but not necessarily the way that others do. Um, I love the creative aspect of being able to do movies, TV, anime, things like that. Um, ever since I've I've kind of gotten into behind the scenes stuff as an actor, I've enjoyed like the process of writing a character, the process of creating a a story arc or a storyline that we can then follow. And I want to be able to share what I've kind of learned over the years in my, in analysis of various beloved franchises or, you know, things that maybe even you guys bring up. So these analysis videos will be everything from story arcs to just an episode to character arcs, et cetera, that I'm really not setting a limit there. Uh, But the, the difference there is going to be, they're not going to be much of a priority um, because I'm taking my time with them. And in some cases where I think that uh, creators or the, that the writing teams and the dev teams failed them. um, I don't like the idea of just leaving it at, this thing sucks because they wrecked it and move on. Um, I actually, while writing those things out, I actually do have a few that I've, I've written out and I'm, I'm trying to figure out to, to get to you guys. Um, I then just started theorizing about how to fix it. So I'd be writing this thing up and I'd be like, eh, this thing sucks and this is why. And then in my head, I'd be percolating of, and I'd actually like eventually put up another sticky note or something like that on the computer and be like, man, they should do this. Yeah, that would make this character a lot. This would character a lot cooler. This story arc would be a lot cooler this way. Um, and so at that point, I have also made the commitment that if I do an analysis video about how a character or a story arc or something like that failed, I also will be doing a corresponding video about what I would do to fix it. Um, and so at that point, that's completely open to two interpretation. Maybe people will not like my storytelling method. Uh, but I think that, that it's at least worthwhile that if I'm saying that they did such a horrible job, I mean, if it was me, my first reaction would be, well, what would you do? So I said, okay, challenge accepted. So that's also going to be happening. The, here's a couple of reasons why it won't have a regular schedule. Obvious for the obvious reasons, but this is definitely something that I feel like it needs a legit editor uh, to be able to do it. And I've been talking in the background with a lot of people trying to find a solid editor or at least get prices to be able to, to see like how much a job like this might take. Um, you guys are f- uh, free to leave comments about that as well. I'm, I'm open to suggestions, but it needs somebody, not me, editing it. Um, I'm, I'm a good editor. I'm better when it comes to audio, but my video editing is very basic and it would take forever to probably bring me up to even a tenth of what you can see on YouTube. Um, So at that point, I would and more importantly, I. If I can support somebody else who can do a better job than me, why the F wouldn't I do that? So I'm that's why I'm kind of opening it up to another editor. And uh, I don't know, maybe I'll open it up to multiple ones. I, I'm not really set on working with just one guy or girl, uh, but I'll, I'll definitely work that out. And that's why it's probably going to take a while. I really want like top quality stuff for these videos because I'm already putting a lot into the writing for them. So um, 
I will keep you posted on when those happen. I've already got like a couple of them figured out. Some of them game related and some of them anime oriented. So lots to look forward to there. So that's pretty much a lot of the the YouTube changes that are going to be happening. And I know I'm oh geez, I got myself there. Uh, I know I'm being a ginormous tease, but part of it is just because like if I had a full time access to YouTube and it was worth the while, I'd probably be pumping this out a lot quicker. But I do actually want to make money. And uh, I know that's that's such a dirty word, isn't it? No, it really isn't. I want to be able to make some money. I want to be able to raise my kids. And so I can't necessarily devote every waking hour to it. And I apologize for that, for those who are irritated about that. And if that's so irritating for you that you need to leave the channel because or you need to not subscribe because you you just feel like I'm being a lazy ass or whatever. I totally understand that. But this is the direction that I've decided I want to go. Um, and it's. You know, I've, I've decided this is just the way that it's got to work. So that's going to be YouTube. What's going to happen with the RSS feed? <laughs> um, <clears throat> a lot of the announcements I actually covered in YouTube. So the main podcast, you guys will hear that later in January on what's going to happen there. Uh, because I have to figure things out in case people don't know this. Uh, Romney can't do the podcast anymore. And so I have to figure out, okay... How do we do this? Because I can't replace Romney and I won't replace Romney. Ultimately, I will. I'll be able to put somebody in his seat, but I can't replace him. That's just not possible. Uh, but the main podcast is still planning on going. Movie night will still be a an exclusive thing. But like I said, it may be recorded live, but as soon as it's edited, it is RSS feed property. And that's the way it goes. Geek News Game Night will also be there. and. I'm mainly planning on an audio format, but I do know uh, services like Spotify allow for video. If I can make that work uh, where you guys can get the game footage as well, then I will try my best. But right now the plan is for audio because I don't know if I have to pay extra for that or anything like that because uh, I am on a service where I have to pay monthly to be able to put up an RSS feed. And once again, first episode, Sly Cooper and the Thievius Raccoonus. <clears throat> Geek News Roundtable is actually a new thing that I had set up later in the year that I really liked because it basically kind of replaced Why We Geek. It allowed for us to have like a set topic and to be able to create a roundtable discussion around it, whether it was just one person, whether it was two. And uh, as much as I love the, 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 the name Why We Geek, the Geek News Roundtable just works a lot better with it. So uh, that will be continuing. But right now, I'm not sure when the first one is going to happen. I'm right now uh, going to make it RSS exclusive because I do think that it's genuine enough content that is just more worthwhile for a podcast than it is for a YouTube video. <coughs> but Geek News Roundtable is coming back. I don't know when. And also in regards to movie night, because people have been asking, OK, when's the next big theme and all that? Um, by sheer luck, I actually won the last movie night, so it is up to me. Uh, I know it's going to return. I have not. I, I may have a couple of themes in mind, but I need to figure out the panel problem before I do anything with it. So I know what I want to do with it, but I need to fix all that stuff at the end of January 1st. And then I will I will get to that. Uh, the other idea that I wanted to also do that would be kind of a rare thing, but maybe would go to the RSS feed and maybe stay on YouTube. I don't know. Um, I've actually been reaching out to a lot of content creators on YouTube and even on Twitch uh, to maybe do like a one on one interview show very much like the Joe Rogan experience. <clears throat> I'm not going to imitate him 100 percent, but I like the format where it's a one on one or a one on two kind of round table interview where we just sit back and we shoot the shit about our favorite geeky stuff. Um, I haven't decided whether or not it's going to be restricted in stuff we talk about, like whether or not to restrict politics from it. Uh, Cause part of me wants to just let the conversation flow where it's going to flow. But I do know that politics are very, uh, 
divisive and uh, very inflammatory in a lot of discussions. So right now, I think it's just going to be like on a case by case basis. And I'm going to try and keep things strictly to gaming content or not to gaming content, but to geek content, like fandom content. Um, I have reached out to a few people and uh, I've heard back with from a few. Uh, there are some I'm, I'm waiting. I'm still waiting to hear back on because I'm basically I'm I'm reaching out to everybody that I really just want to talk to on on the platform and, and just have a conversation and pick their brain for a little bit. <clears throat> I have unfortunately have not re reached out to Joe Rogan. I do not think he will ever have time, but uh, I have reached out to a few and I'm I'm waiting to hear back from two or three of them. <coughs> Hopefully that will happen soon, but that is something that you guys can look forward to. I don't know what I'm going to call it. Part of me wants to just keep it in the geek news round table, uh, kind of venue, but I don't know. Uh, we'll, we'll have to figure that one out, uh, one out when I actually get one of those interviews figured out. And as soon as I do, I probably will be broadcasting it live. So you guys can join in on the conversation as well. Cause I think that's kind of fun. Uh, as long as people don't get douchey about it. So that's going to be another thing that that happens. Uh, and I'm not sure when I went on that either. I, I need to hear back from some other people and then figure out days and all that, because like this is going to be one of those things where I kind of open myself up to them uh, because they're they're giving me the time. I want to make sure that I can do their schedule kind of thing. <clears throat> that is pretty much the schedule updates, but there is one other thing that I want to address. I have knocked YouTube and Twitch a number of times, and I will continue to knock them. Their platforms have massive flaws, and one of which uh, is, is the fact that if you say or do certain things that go against a political ideology or a certain demographic that maybe they feel is sheltered and must be sheltered, you will get punished for it, whether or not you should. I believe in free speech. I believe that everybody has the right to get mocked. Uh, they can be complimented or they can be mocked either way. Uh, so I've, I've obviously stated that I have very vocal concerns with both YouTube as well as Twitch. <laughs> that being said, I will primarily stay on these to because those are already established. However, I will be branching out to new platforms this year. Because the bottom line is, is that even though even if I hit that magical 1000 subscribers and got monetized on YouTube and I had the big explosion of viewers and subscribers, which I would be very thankful for. I don't know if I would want to do business with YouTube. I do not like the sketchy practices that they are implementing. And I want to be able to like, you know, I'm, I treat business relationships the same as I treat any other relationship. It's a give and take thing. And if I can't trust you to have my back when I rock the boat, as it were, and I do rock the boat a lot for those who are joining brand new. If I can't trust you to have my back when that happens, who can I trust? And so at that point, I don't even know if I want a business relationship with YouTube because the second I do something that they don't like or say something that they don't approve of, I mean, for crying out loud, I'm wearing a Steven Crowder shirt right now. So they could literally look at that and go, well, we don't like the fact that you wore that shirt. We're going to demonetize you. And that's their platform. They can do what they want. However, I disagree with their methods on it. Um, that's why I've decided I'm going to be, to be branching out to new platforms. Um, I know that a lot of people will say like, well, you, you're just making the usual red pill con conservative, uh, excuses on that. No, because I actually do want to be able to establish business relationships with this. If my podcast is successful, I would like to have business relationships and I want to be able to trust the people that I'm working with. And, and trust them to be able to have my back and, and to know that this is who I'm going to be. And if they have a problem with that, then maybe we can't work together. And YouTube is YouTube and Twitch have made it very painfully clear. They don't want that. So I'm going to reach out to some of the platforms that exist out there now and see if they do. 
Because who knows? Maybe Rumble wouldn't won't mind that. Or maybe Odyssey won't have a problem with what I'm saying. Uh, and I, I think it's at least worthwhile to be able to do that. With branching out, right now the plan is just to branch out with the with the podcast. So the YouTube content, like the analysis videos, isn't really in the cards. In fact, I've already started up on a few of those platforms and I just started up under the GNRO podcast. Um, and I'm probably going to keep it that way. But who knows? You know, if, if the analysis videos um, start getting a demand for places like Odyssey or if they get heavily popular, I might consider it just because um, I want to be able to get it to to the people that want it. And at that point, if that means that it's better, if it does better on Odyssey, I want to put it on Odyssey. I want to put it where, where people are going to enjoy it. So I am going to be branching out. But for right now, it's going to be based specifically with the podcast, not necessarily with the YouTube stuff and not necessarily with the with the streaming stuff or anything like that. <sighs> that's that's a lot to get out, but that is the the schedule updates that I have for now uh, for both YouTube as well as for the RSS feed. Once again, guys, I thank you guys so much for the support and love and patience that you have shown me in my content creation and in the wealth of issues that I had during 2021. And that's why, in a lot of cases, this schedule had to be implemented the way that it is. So I thank you from the bottom of my heart for all the support that you have shown. Hopefully this all works out with you. If not, I understand and I thank you nonetheless for the support that you've given me. But without further ado, I'm going to get this shit edited and uh, we're going to get back to work because we have so much stuff that we want to get back into starting in 2022. So until then, take care and we'll see you next time.